The Big Short was directed by Adam McKay and here comes the part where I've got to try and explain this film when I don't know anything about the world of finance and banking and brokerage and stocks and bonds and sub premium mortgage swap things. So the movie is based on a true story about a bunch of financial analysts who predict a massive financial collapse in the mid 2000s and bet against the banks in a way to make a crap ton of money. The financial collapse of course affects people's mortgages and homes and winds up causing millions of people to become homeless and jobless and has dire consequences on the world. But these people want to make a lot of money so they kind of do some morally ambiguous things well they're not really ambiguous they're kind of wrong and there's our movie I think okay the thing with this movie is that it is really hard to understand if you don't know anything about the world of finance that kind of thing you are gonna be left going what the hell are these people saying in a way it was kind of like watching a foreign film with the subtitles turned off uh, I had a really hard time following what was going on but that being said it was still actually quite interesting they just gave you enough information to kind of follow what was going on and so I mean I didn't want to switch it off halfway through or anything like that I was still intrigued as to what was going on and the thing that really stood out for me the most were the performances now this movie was directed by Adam McKay who you're probably familiar with his work he's done things like the Anchorman movies Talladega Nights Step Brothers pretty much a lot of silly Will Ferrell comedies and this was his first foray into dramatic filmmaking. So of the three lead roles we've got Christian Bale, Steve Carell and Ryan Gosling. Uh, my god Christian Bale was incredible in this movie. Actually all three leads really transformed themselves into characters not just in their mannerisms but their looks as well like it was almost hard to recognize some of the people in this film. Brad Pitt had a small role in the film and wow he looked really different. So Bale plays a person named Michael Burry who is a doctor and he's one of the most fascinating characters I've seen in a movie in a long time. This guy was just really unconventional to the point where in his office he just dresses in t-shirt and shorts, walks around barefoot, plays heavy metal music with drumsticks on his knees and has zero capability of interacting with other human beings. This guy was so awkward and I loved every minute that he was on screen. He was so captivating. Steve Carell also broke away from his usual comedic roles and played a very interesting character and I really dug as the movie was progressing you know you could just see how the whole moral thing was affecting his character character and was just destroying his soul and you know he sort of goes from like a really angry bitter person to just depressed by the end and he did a great job in his performance. Another standout for me was the style and cinematography of the film. They kind of went for almost like a documentary style. There was a lot of handheld camera work. I'm pretty sure not a single tripod was used in this film and a lot of zooms and focus shifts that kind of thing. It really gave it a realistic documentary sort of a style but I'm not 100% sure if it really worked. It was almost like Adam McKay was trying out something new and you could just sort of see that he wasn't completely comfortable with the style. There were also a lot of things like characters breaking the fourth wall and sort of turning to the audience and trying to explain things. There were some really novel ways of trying to dumb things down a little bit for the audience, including getting some celebrity cameos to try and explain what's going on. And I'm sure I'm not the only one in saying that my my favourite of the bunch was Margot Robbie in a bubble bath trying to explain something. It was hilarious. So there were a lot of really interesting style choices. Not 100% sure if it worked, especially being that the movie was 2 hours and 10 minutes. It kind of felt towards the end like it might have overstayed its welcome just a little bit. So while the movie was interesting enough to watch, I probably wouldn't see it again. It was just way too bogged down in a lot of jargon and terminology that I didn't understand. There were really really solid performances from all the actors and I'm really interested to see where Adam McKay goes from here on in. I'm sure he's going to do some more dramatic stuff and I'm definitely interested to see what he comes up with next. But in the meantime I'm going to give The Big Short a 6 out of 10. 
Now I'm not including this movie in my Total Recall series of, you know, films that have been and gone because this technically is a 2016 movie for us here in Australia. It didn't actually come out here till January, so I am including this movie in this year's films. Now I would really love to hear your thoughts on The Big Short if you've seen it. If you're one of those people who actually understood what was being said and what was going on in the film, drop me some comments, let me know what you thought of it. And if you're someone like me who just didn't have a clue what was going on, also let me know because I'd like to know that I'm not the only one who couldn't really follow what was being said in the film. So drop me some comments either here or on Facebook. All my social media links are in the description below because I like to talk about movies and I would love to talk about movies with you. See you next time. Click subscribe to stay up to date with all the latest movie reviews. Skynet will be taking over any day now. So what have you got to lose? Nah.